Astronaut Doug Hurley, husband of Karen Nyberg. Doug, uh, on a gorgeous day here in Baikonur, Karen's ticket to ride is ready to uh, be hoisted for final preparations for launch. She's been training hard and for a long time for this flight. What's her level of preparation, excitement, or anticipation at this point? Well, I think it's a, a lot of everything, Rob. You know, she's, as you said, you know, it's been almost a three-year journey to get to this point. There's just a, a tremendous amount of excitement. And I think, you know, folks, as they go through the training for one of these expeditions, you kind of, you know, you keep plodding along and working hard and doing all your traveling and your training. And then now it's finally that, you know, we're a couple days from launch. So she's very, very excited to be getting ready to go finally. So Karen takes off. She leaves the home fires burning for you. Uh, how, how do you guys juggle the preparations and then obviously for the next five six months your execution of everything back at home well it's uh it's a lot of different things a lot of support from family and friends and 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 a lot of planning and uh you know karen is meticulous uh, about everything in her life and you know i think we've got a good plan to get to get our family through the next five months and and obviously with all the the great um family support folks at nasa and all the things we can do she can call us from the space station we can do video conferences so uh, I think, it, I think we're well prepared for this. For a crew member in the final days before launch, uh, it, it's as much psychological as it is anything else to get in the right frame of mind, have your wits about you, all your procedures at, at, at your disposal. 
what goes into these final days of training, if you will, or, or is it more relaxation and just getting in the right frame of mind? So for the last couple of weeks, uh, the crew has actually been down here in Baikonur going through final fit checks and preparations for launch, and they've had a pretty relaxed schedule. Um, the last four days or so prior to launch accelerate pretty quickly, and the preparations uh, are very mundane, whether it's packing up the things that you've had the last couple weeks or planning uh, which bag will be in which location based on uh, which landing site you may actually end up uh, uh, when you actually return. And so Karen's been uh, going through all of those activities, and I'll say the last four days or so have been pretty mundane uh, until she leads up to uh, the launch activities that, of course, are pretty exciting. When she and her crewmates reach the International Space Station, no time to lose. They're off and running on six months of almost every facet of human spaceflight with the visiting vehicles, the spacewalks, and so forth. How complex will this increment be over the next six months until November? You're exactly right, Rob. This is going to be a very, very busy increment. The crew is going to face uh, uh, multiple visiting vehicles, uh, upwards of five spacewalks, uh, U.S. and Russian. Uh, so it should be a very interesting time. I think uh, the most interesting time probably will be towards the end of the increment where we're planned to have three Soyuz docked simultaneously, which will be a unique experience for Karen and the rest of her crew to participate in. But they're all prepared and they're looking forward to the challenge. Well, Frank Devine, you're the head of the Astronaut Center, but you're also a former astronaut. So what does it feel to be here now on the launch pad? Yeah, it's of course uh, always a great pleasure to be here on the launch, launch pad. It means that we have one of our European astronauts from the ESA Astronaut Corps flying to space. Luca Parmitano, in this case from Italy, is going to launch from this pad in two days. It's always an exciting moment and we are looking forward to a great mission. Those missions, those long duration missions, and you've been part of one, are very important for ESA. What, what do they represent for us? The long duration missions are very important for ESA. Of course, we do a lot of science during those long duration missions, but we also build up a lot of the expertise of the European Astronaut Corps. It's really an example of our participation in the International Space Station. We can show it to the whole world how we uh, continue to work together with our international partners and how we participate in this great program. And uh, uh, this type of operation when you're an astronaut, are they difficult to follow or is it something that you've been waiting for and that maybe you miss in yourself now? Yeah, as an astronaut, of course, you always have a dual feeling when you stand here. It's great to see it, but you remember your own time. Of course, I would prefer to go back into the rocket and to fly to space myself, but now it's the time for our young generation of astronauts to fly, to uh, get expertise in uh, human spaceflight. Luco is the first of the new core to fly. It will be great for him, but we have many others, and uh, by 2017, all of them will have flown.